Hello there! My name is Rachel, the first time I see my channel, I used to review cartoon series, anime series, and something completely random. And today we talk about the first impression of season 3, episode 1 of Token and Bird, and episode 2. Now, Token and Bird is one of those shows and legitimately is on its prime because the chemistry and their personality, the constant jokes, it just keep landing every single second. Both episodes are just so good, especially the first episode. The, oh, the first episode saw a purchase of uh, Birdie trying to run her own business, but sort of failing or not sure what she supposed to do. That's sort of exciting that you know what Birdie really does. But I love it that Tuka reverse, she having all success of her career. I mean, she's that kind of person who go in the bowl and tell you, oh, this section is this, this section is that. But being basically Tuka over a top, outrageous, doing an extra money in the corner, not, not, not to find out being fired. Yeah, that was basically kind of interesting because this allowed her to be extra successful. So much success that her own manager promoted her twice and invested twice or more money from different loan sharks to put her in the business because of Tuka successful act. And you feel Tuka being, nah, I've gotta be fired. Just give it a second. That sort of denial that she does not deserve. But at the very end, she does because the, the, the whole company is successful because of Tuka, her kind of wild side of her, more of the hype woman she really is, and she still feels she doesn't earn it, she knows something bad that's about to happen, and that's sort of interesting because it's also fall into uh, Sparkles also. Yeah, I feel Sparkles become basically the third main lead of this series because Sparkle become the B lister, but then become my A lister because he really shows he also his career is booming, but at the same time not sure what he's doing is the right way. He also wait for his girlfriend business to also pick up. He doesn't really want to kind of rub it in her face. He doesn't, but he sort of accidentally keeps saying things that could be very pissed off kind of moment. You see uh, Birdie trying to not to be mad, not to be unhappy. She's panicking like always, but not sure what she's doing wrong and comparing her, not comparing, comparing her hero who she is also a baker. She want to be like her. She want to basically adopt her, kiss her, tell her she's great. And I feel that sort of exception force her to be more strict to herself now where she started panicking doesn't know what to do the right thing even kind of annoying the little things that should be not annoying to her become more annoying more of panicky because she feels sort of belittled by her best friend and her boyfriend being successful but i love that sort of dynamic each one of them has its own issues but different point of views of success and i found that sort of interesting especially Tuka that she doesn't want to be praised. She want to be basically punished. She feels she sort of deserved it but at the end you earn or to success. Of course uh, probably because of his manager uh, fault how much pressure she gave to her to be her and that's sort of interesting. And I think that's why I enjoyed this episode so much. It's just sort of the explanation of success and failure and you know, sometimes you have to learn Okay, maybe this business sort of failed. What did I did? Did I like this part of the business? And you look for that sort of thing you like and improve on that. Yeah, I feel that's sort of interesting, especially what happened in the episode that Bernie got hired by the person she's admired the most to be more the big thing side uh, section that she is so good at. And I thought that's sort of interesting, sort of rare satisfying thing would happen at the very end. Even everything sort of went wrong, it just sort of landed so well. And also the second episode was sort of a surprise. It's all about Tuka, uh, that day of the month kind of situation. That I thought, alright, this is basically a very more female centric episode. Maybe I didn't care, maybe I should not watch it. But you know what, I give it a chance. Yeah, well, you, know, you know what, I really enjoyed it because it's sort of interesting how she doesn't know how, what's wrong with her body that she trying to find out why it hurts and trying to go doctor by doctor understanding it but never giving the results she wants never give her a cleaner 
answer. They could be me genetics or not because her aunt had the same problem to the very end of the apples explaining sometimes you don't have to answer you just sort of have to deal with this or rest of your life. It's not bad. It's just you need to some figure out how to way to make yourself sort of happy or find someone to you could talk to. And that was sort of surprisingly very wholesome, very honest. Oh my god. And I feel that episode should be a bad episode, but it wasn't. It was really good, especially what uh, Bernie did to Tuka that she used her phone to text her boyfriend. Not by sexually or anything, it's just Bernie was bored and things become unraveled because she pretended to be Tuka. But I think they did this to sort of pump more up the boyfriend of Tuka, the new boyfriend, how kind and sweet he is, how understanding and experienced and very open. Yeah, I thought that's sort of interesting because anyone else or any other show tempted to do that, do something that the main lead shouldn't do or you feel that a character wouldn't do, just did it to make it more interesting or just f push this narrative. And that I feel sort of surprised. It never felt anything like that. It felt like what would actually happen, but more kind of funny. Usually this type of uh, tactics sort of fail and burn but no, especially you lead into uh, Sparkle also helping Birdie to keep doing the lie of texting because Birdie kind of screwed up. Yeah, I just <laughs> enjoyed that how Sparkles just went with it. He became uh, Tuka, did the whole drag, trying to convince uh, Tuka's boyfriend if it's, it's he, but never really track. It's just sort of yeah, we went there, quick and out, didn't drag, just there, perfect. But at the same time, leading to something about Tuka's boyfriend, that he also could be an alcoholic. Maybe, maybe that's the reason why he's so chillaxing, understanding. I don't know, could be a twist in the end of your series, we're about to find out, wait a couple of weeks. But at the very end, this second episode should be bad, but it wasn't. It was kind of fun wholesome, interesting. Even this episode was specific for more female lead, lead uh, people. It okay to, if you're a guy to even watch it because you really did enjoy, you do feel compassion in the situation of Tuka and that takes very well written skill. Anyone else or any other show doing this, you easily kind of fall and fail and this one feels just sort of a normal day and this is what I mean Season 3, at least the first two episodes, feels in their prime. Like, anything they write becomes gold. Hopefully I'm not wrong. Hopefully this whole season will be great. But all that, I'm completely satisfied. Every single angle works for now. Now I have one question. How do you feel about this episode? You feel this too was really great? Really boring? Tell me down below. Let me know. I honestly got nothing else to say. Just thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And have a wonderful day. Bye.